Uh, welcome, everyone, to Coffee with Coaches on the Muskie Sports Network. I'm Tom Caudell, and joining me today is Muskingum head softball coach, Carrie Winters. Coach, welcome to Coffee with Coaches. Thanks, Tom. I've got my coffee right here. Shout out to, to Daniel Jennings for sure. Oh, uh, yeah, Daniel Jennings. I'll tell you, if you're looking for that fresh roast experience, it's JenningsJava.com. Uh, check it out. Daniel will take care of you, a musky student athlete during his time here, founded the company here at Muskingum. He's an awesome guy, awesome company, and we appreciate all his support. You know, Coach, we, we talked about this before. We've been trying to connect a little bit, and this is going to give our fans, your fans, and people who follow musky softball a better chance to get to know you beyond just being a coach. Uh, so we came up with some fun questions, and are you ready to get started? Let's roll. All right. Uh, Talk to us about how you started with softball. When did when did when did the love first start developing? How old were you? Oh uh, man, I, I feel like it probably developed even you know when I was in the womb. Honestly, my family, <laughs> uh, I'm one of four, and I have three older brothers. Um, my dad's one of eleven, and my mom is is one of six. So um, baseball was always a really big family sport growing up. Um, my older brothers played Division One baseball at UD, played club baseball at, at the University of Dayton, um, you know, so it was always a front yard game, really. Um, there was a, a joke growing up in our hometown that when the Hoying kids got in trouble that my mom and dad would just kick us outside and, and make us play ball, um, when obviously the reality is we just all loved it that much. So it, it was it was a true family sport. And what about, where'd you grow up at? Um, I'm from Rishi, Ohio. Um, I grew up on a 180-acre farm. Um, and it's, it's about an hour Northwest of Dayton. So Rushi, you got the Hoying family out there, uh, had to be good times at Rushi going through high school, playing all the sports with you and your family and siblings. Yeah, it was just a great support system. Um, the, the hometown of Rushi, um, great academic school, but, but for sure athletics is, is a big part of it. Um, you know, you're, you're on average graduating from right around, you know, 27 to 35 kids in a graduating class. And so, for sports to work at a D4 high school, usually you have to, to be involved in a number of them. So um, athletics is runs runs th thick through the veins, but had a great support system from back home. Yeah, you know, you think back to your high school glory days, uh, any favorite memories or moments that stand out to you? You know, I, I honestly, um, whenever I just look back at my, my four years of high school, you know, even before that junior high, middle school, we just were blessed with a lot of great coaches with morals and ethics. And, you know, they taught you how to grind it out and work hard. Um, we won a, a district volleyball championship my senior year in volleyball and, and won the conference. And that was a, that was a big deal for the town. That was cool to see. Um, but it, it honestly, it, it just was a pleasure to play every, every home event or an away event in, in front of your hometown fans. Cause they, uh, you know, it, it's it wasn't just your parents in Rushi, Ohio. It was it was everybody, you know, so that was really cool. So I don't know if I have a favorite, to be honest with you. It just was a, an unbelievable experience. So from Rushi to Muskingum, how did that connection happen? Ha, Donna Newberry recruited the heck out of me. Um, you know, she she was an avid recruiter and. Um, I was blessed to have some travel ball teammates that played here, Lindsey Bramhall and Erica Hoyt, um, both unbelievable musky softball players. Um, but, you know, Co Coach Newberry wouldn't give up. Um, I initially had big school dreams, you know, Division One dreams. I had, um, you know, co committed to the University of Dayton to, to go there academically and, and was going to going to try to play softball as well, obviously. And um, something just didn't feel right. And Coach Newberry kept at it. And, you know, I, I ended up visiting after I graduated high school and loved it and wanted to play for a national championship. And, um, you know, it was funny because after I graduated college, I thought I'd go wherever the wind blew me. Um, you know, I, I had ambitions. Let's go to a big city. Well, the wind, wind hasn't blown very hard <laughs> for the last however many years, but it's, it's been a, a great fit. You know, I started at Muskingum the year after the national championship and got to know Coach Newberry very well and had a lot of runs, a lot of them with you on the team going to the World Series. Uh, what yeah. was it like playing for Coach Newberry? She was tough. You know, I, I don't I would love to see how how her teams would do in, in today's day and age, um, you know, because she had these expectations and she wasn't going to back down from those expectations, you know, and um, the, the teammates, the, the players that made it the four years, um, you you worked your tails off and it, and it wasn't fun all the time. Um, the winning was fun, you know, and you look back at it and you say, wow, that was an unbelievable experience. And we learned a lot. But the sweat and the tears that that she pulled from you um, mentally and emotionally, I think that that's what what always made us 
championship caliber, you know, is, is that um, you weren't just out there, um, you know, doing drills just to do them. There was always a purpose. There was always a mental challenge in practice. There was always a physical challenge in practice. Um, and it made us stronger, all of us, um, you know, and, and uh, we kind of rolled with that. You know, lots of championships during your time here as a Muskie. When you think back to your time on our campus as a student athlete, any special moments? I tell you, um, going to the World Series throughout of the four years, when, when you win that regional championship and, and you're celebrating with your team, um, those memories, uh, those will hold, hold strong for the rest of my life. Um, you know, my senior year, um, I will never forget. We were, we were in New Jersey for the regional, um, and that was back before they did the super regional. Um, and we were coming in, um, you know, as a, as a top ranked team and, um, got knocked down to the loser's bracket early and actually had to win three games on championship Sunday, which, um, there was a whole lot of rain moving in. So that was our only option. Um, and you know, we, we had Heather Martin, who was our number two pitcher that year, come in and, and strike out the last out. Um, with three change-ups, you know, and, and those details, I just feel like you never forget. But that was that was really cool. I remember being over in New Jersey for that tournament, and it was such a wild ride that the final three teams standing were all within about 45 minutes here of the <laughs> Concord, but we're playing, you know, several hours away from track. Right. It was such a great yeah. time, and Coach Newberry had that passion. She wanted those games in on that final day. We got them in, and uh, great, great to you and to the teammates there to advance the World Series. Uh, Coach, when did you first – discover that you had that burning desire that you wanted to discover the coaching path? Um, you know, I always thought that I, I wanted to coach high school. Uh, my undergrad from Muskingum is in physical education and health and um, kind of realized halfway through my junior year after many conversations with Elizabeth Ziha um, that teaching high school physical education actually was not what I was meant to do. And, and Coach Newberry offered me her graduate assistant position my junior year because obviously she knew that the rotation would be open. Um, and, and so she saw it in me before I think I even saw it in myself. Um, so it, it was like a, a door had opened at the right time where um, I, I started to realize I didn't want to be a day in and day out classroom teacher. Um, and, and then this coaching thing presented itself and, and I accepted, um, you know, coach Newberry's in the national coaches hall of fame. Um, she's in a teen amount of hall of fames and, and it would have been very foolish of me to turn that, you know, position down. And, and thankfully it, it's, it's worked out. So how have your experiences as a student athlete? I mean, you played for a storied program, one of the best programs in the country. Uh, you, you played for a legendary coach. Uh, coach Ziha, also a legend in, in the world of volleyball as a mentor for the academic side. How have those experiences help you become a head coach? You know, I just I just loved going to um, Coach Ziha's volleyball games and, and just watching her just showcase her passion for her players, um, you know, on, on the court, which was – which was great. And then, you know, just having her show me that, that a coach can also be an academic advisor and, and a teacher, um, what was, I, I connected to that. Um, and, you know, just spend a day in and day out time with coach Newberry over my four years. Um, it, it made me really, really hone in on the fact that even though you're, you don't have teacher in front of your name, a, a coach, you do all of the above. And, and so that really, um, that really meant a lot to me to have those two really strong women in my life during those those years where I was trying to figure it all out. Um, you know, and, and though Coach Newberry is not here anymore, um, you know, think about her daily and think about what would she do in, in so many situations. And, um, you know, I still pick up the phone and call Coach Zeha, um, you know, and, and it, it's great to have somebody there that no matter if it's been a week or six months, um, it, you know, you don't skip a beat. She's She's quality people, that's for sure. Uh, coaches teach life skills every day to your student athletes. You serve as a mentor, a role model, help them af athletically, academically, and throughout their journey in life. Coach, when you think back to your how, how you approach work, is there somebody who influenced you the most? You know, um, my parents, my dad was a businessman um, all of his life, you know, and he, he got off of his eight to five job. He came home and he, he ran the farm, you know, um, with with the assistance of, of my brothers. Um but it's, I think it's been instilled in me, you know, to, to just keep the grind and, um, you know, even on days off, what can you be doing? Can you be calling recruits? Can you be texting recruits? You know, can you be checking in with your kids? Um, it, it's, it's been a, a number of people, but I think that my parents, you know, they, they provided this upbringing for me that, that taught me how to be a good person, um, you know, and, and I'm not definitely not perfect, but 
there's a lot of times where I pick up the phone as a 34 year old and I call them just to thank them, you know, and I think that that's, that's, uh, that, that, that's who gets the credit on that answer. How does coach winners prefer to start her day? Huh? With not three crying children. (laughs) So I have, um, obviously I have a four year old Reed and then Callie is two. Um, and we just had Carter three months ago and, um, you know, on an ideal morning when, you know, Saturday morning, it starts with a lot of coffee. Um, on a weekday, it starts um, with a hustle and bustle around the house of trying to get kids changed and um, diapers changed and kids fed and, you know, them out the door without their cereal on their shirts. It's uh, I, have, I have a little bit of a joke, Tom. I call my van the hot mess express because when it comes rolling through New Concord in the morning, it's uh, it's moving. <laughs> I tell you, we have, you know, we grew up with two young boys at the same time. Other coaches had young children as well. I mean, we've been through there and know what you're talking about. You know, it, 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 sometimes it's the victory just getting into your office in the morning yeah. without stuff all over you. Um, when you get to work, what is it that energizes you here on campus? You know, I start every morning with a, a coaches meeting. Um, I, I've always been blessed to have an unbelievable coaching staff, um, just quality people that, you know, love love the game and honestly just love life. Um, and right now I have Carol Oberhelman as my graduate assistant and Shauna Mulcarin as my full time um, and Steve Kogel as, as a part time guy. And so um, Steve, not in the office, but it, Carol and Shauna and I start every every morning and um, you know, it, it's just good to, to check in on on what's new with, with them um, and, and, you know, how we can improve our, our team. But it's been it's been fun to, to start the day with a coaches meeting. Um, you know, I think every coach is different in their own way, but I like to get get that rolling so we can kind of plan our day. So when you head out from work here, what is it that energizes you outside of work? Um, take advantage of free time. <laughs> you know, obviously right now we're kind of in this uh, this covid period where. Um, We've been fortunate to make it through the phases and have a lot of one-on-one time with our team, which has been great. Um, And and honestly, since that started back up um, a couple of weeks ago, I feel like I have a level of normalcy back, Um, you know, so it's been uh, just a a breath of fresh air to get out out on the field with with those women, Um, you know, because you just, we we learned it in the spring when our season was was taken away from us, you know, cut short because of the the pandemic that you just never know what tomorrow is going to bring. So um, I've kind of tried to tackle that mentality at, in my personal life as well as professional. So just trying to make the most of it. You talked a little bit about the spring. Let's go back there for a second. That had to be one of the most difficult days of your coaching career when you gathered your team together to tell them that spring sports were postponed. They were canceled due to COVID. How difficult of a day was that? Oh, man. Um a day that I don't ever want to have to relive. That's for sure. You know, it it definitely wasn't the most severe um, outcomes. You know, everybody on our team is still alive and healthy. Um, But it was, you know, we had just gotten back from Florida and um, a couple of teams that were supposed to be in Florida the week that we left, their administration wouldn't let them travel. And so that's when it started to become for me a holy smokes, this thing is, this thing is real and and it's probably going to hit us and affect us. Um, And when it did, you know, I think I let my, my redhead emotion get, get the best of me a little bit. Um, I was, I was bummed for players. I was, I was a little bit angry because I I couldn't understand it. Um, But then when you took a a step back, you know, and and realized that the world that we're living in right now and and the severity of, of elderly and, and preconsist, you know, conditions that we can't control. Um, it just was so much bigger than, than college softball. And so, you know, we just kept trying to, to tell our players to spend the time with family and, uh, you know, stay on top of their academics and to do things that maybe they don't normally have time to do. Um, and they made the most of it, which was great. I felt for our seniors, of course, you know, but, um, we can't do anything about it. So we just keep on chugging along. How special was it that the season's canceled, but Denison and Muskingum able to get together, play one game, um, help provide some closure for your seniors, get on that diamond one more time. How special of a day was that for Muskie softball? Yeah, that was awesome, you know, because in a world where a lot of the administrations and the administrators were were making decisions to just shut everything down, um, Steve and, and President Hassler and Denison's administration said, let's do this one last game for our seniors. And and they did a great job with it. You know, I, I remember when the national anthem was playing before the game, um, I had tears rolling down my eyes because, you know, you're sitting here thinking that at 18 to 22 years old, um, you've got something, you, you know, these players had something so special stripped, but it was so cool because the the stands 
it was one of the only sporting events going on in the country. You know, we were joking. We should have called ESPN to, you know, little Granville, Ohio. But um, Steve and his wife made the trip and President Hassler and, and Ken made the trip. And, um, you know, it, it was it was nice to have one last hurrah. And the seniors, they played the whole day, you know, and, and we had a lot of energy. And um, I, I think that our if, if anything positive came from it, um, it just was showcasing how much athletics really does mean to Muskingum University, which is cool. Yeah, athletics, I mean, here on our campus, a lot of campuses across the country, it's such a bright spot on campus every day. When you think back about your time being head coach here at Muskingum, is there a moment that you're proud of, a memory that sticks out? Um, really proud of our two championship teams, um, you know, that we've had since I've been the head coach 2014 and 2019. Um, proud of the leadership that came from those squads because that, that's not an easy feat to accomplish, especially in our conference, you know, um, so that, that's been cool. Honestly, Tom, um, my favorite thing about coaching and, and probably the most gratifying thing is when our, our players graduate and they invite us back to their weddings, you know, they, they tell us when they're pregnant, you know, those kind of life events that happen post softball cleats, post uniform, um, that, that's one of my absolute favorite things. And I know that that's not necessarily a team memory, um, but that's what I love the most. So. Well, it shows the impact that you've made on your players and student athletes, staying in touch with them throughout life. Facebook is great for that. See how they yeah. are. And you're right, the weddings, you know, they keep pouring in. So much fun to go there and, and reminisce about the days of being a player or when you coach them. Um, what is something that most people don't know about Coach Winters? Huh. I don't know. You know, I tell almost everybody I meet that I'm a huge family person. So they know that um, I, I am an avid, old, retired, like athlete who loves to compete in racquetball. So any racquetball players on, on our campus, if they want to challenge, we still have one court. Um, so Coach Thompson and I, you know, and, and now Coach Gunderson's kind of in that mix, too. But but I do love racquetball. Um, you know, I, I think that one area that I, I don't talk a lot about is is what I do in my free time and um, I love to hike which you know I've never been mountain mountain hiking or anything to those regards but Hocking Hills and any of the local parks that we can get to um, love to be outdoors and let's not forget the intramural volleyball championships at the yeah <laughs> yeah anytime um, we I still tell all of our recruits that if they play volleyball you know we have intramural volleyball on a non-COVID pandemic year and the faculty and staff um you know, we're, we're coming for them. So we, we do instill that little bit of fear in any, any volleyball recruit we bring to campus. <laughs> uh, what's something that's made you smile recently? Oh man. Um, Carter, our, our youngest was baptized on Saturday. Um, and, and that was a really cool moment because our, my whole family was in town, um, which was, which was cool. Um, but that, that was, that was just, you know, two days ago. So that was definitely a plus. Well, that's something that will always make you smile and always be a memory close to the heart. Uh, Carrie, when you were a kid and you were growing up, what did you envision yourself being? <laughs> so we, man, we just talked about this in the office. I always thought that I wanted to be a physician's assistant, which is so funny. Really, I think I just saw the salary of a physician's assistant. <laughs> uh, so my dad had actually, he received a biology degree from the University of Dayton and then went on to med school. Um, and, and because of life and marriage and, and kids, um, he decided to take a, a step back. But um, always thought that I wanted to be a doctor for, for some reason. And I hate blood. And, you know, so, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, that, that didn't really match. And I, I realized that, you know, my senior year of high school, once I got into to school, that biology definitely wasn't the first route. I, um, I remember taking Dr. Shelley Amstutz Delay's biology class as a freshman. Um, and she, if she listens to these, will probably remember. But I was like, holy Toledo, I am not meant for this. <laughs> so very humbling, very humbling class. Um, but I, I definitely didn't think that I was going to be doing what I, I am doing. Um, I absolutely love it, though. So I'm glad I'm glad Coach Newberry saw it in me before I saw it in myself. So if we were sitting at a wedding and we're sitting around with some of your friends and your former teammates and I asked them to describe you in three words, what are they going to tell me? <laughs> That's not a fair question for coffee, co coffee talk. No. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that I think that they would have commented on my uh, my commitment to the team and, and to, to our success. Um, I think that they would have hopefully would have, you know, considered my, my friendship and loyalty, a, a definite strength. Um, and, you know, I, I think, 
I, I never miss a class in undergrad, you know, so pretty, pretty big role follower, you know, as, as much as I could be. So that was, uh, that, that would be up there as well. A great three ways or words to describe you. And also a way that I, when I look at it, it's the way you run your program. I mean, commitment, go to class, the academics are important. Um, you're doing a great job with, with the young women in your program and on our campus. They are so well respected. Uh, Coach, if we're doing a movie, the Coach Winners movie, who's playing Coach Winners? Oh, Tom, I saw this question and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you you could have somebody a, like a, a more serious version of a Tina Fey, maybe. Um, <laughs> probably she's way more funnier than I am, but I think I'm at that level of funny. Um, but no, I, I don't I don't know I don't know that answer. I couldn't even think about it if like when I when I saw it, I'm like I don't know. Um, somebody who has the right level of serious, but the the right level of, of prankster. You know, when I see a, a coach walking down the hallway that has got their head down, I. I love to hide around the corner and jump out and scare them, you know, just to <laughs> just to reset their energy. So you just never know what's happening over here in the athletic department. What about superpower? If you had a superpower, what would it be? Oh man, my superpower would, would be connected to my mom, my motherhood, but it would be the power to just click a button and have all of my kids in the morning do exactly what they needed to do in like a 20 minute span. That would be my superpower. That would be miraculous if that could happen. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's like the you know when you're stuck in the um like the eyeball like the days or or what it, what is it called whenever you um I can't even think about it when but whenever somebody comes in and like tricks your mind what's the word I'm thinking of um but that's that's the thing we're reading Callie we're just tunnel vision and they were stuck in it and just went that would be awesome. That would be, we, I could go there every day with Mary Beth, with Tanner and Ty, you know, get off to school. It's always 20 minutes. We could do it in 20 minutes. It'd be awesome. Um, yeah. What about food now? I mean, we've been in COVID. You know, some people are kind of, you know, staying home a little more often. But if there's one food that you had to eat for the rest of your life, what's your go-to? Um, five course meal? No. Um, I am a big pizza lover. Super healthy choice as a, as a person. And it sticks to my thighs more now than it did when I was 18 years old. But um, I, I love, love a good pizza and I like to try pizza from different places, but that would probably be our go-to. When Dom and I got married, we told our parents that we wanted a pizza bar and my, my parents were like, yeah, we probably shouldn't do that. So <laughs> let's, let's have something a little bit more nice. You know, COVID's also made us more digital these days. Everything's happening. Our meeting right now, digital. Um, if you only had three apps on your phone, what would your three apps be? Um, well, I have for, for my motherhood, it would be Disney plus, um, for my personal sanity, it would probably be Instagram, um, just to keep up with my friends and family from home. Um, and then to, for my professional world, it would be Twitter so, because all of our recruits put everything up via Twitter. So Twitter for family, Instagram for me and for my sanity and public Disney plus. Those are three great apps apps ever that a lot of people have chosen um what about a bucket list you said you like to get out you enjoy the outdoors uh a, a big family person is there something on the bucket list still that you want to check off um I, you know I've, I've always had an interest to go to italy um you know and, and and do some sightseeing over there um i'm also when i say that a person that gets very anxious in international travel so that doesn't <laughs> match very well um, when Dom and I went on our honeymoon as soon as the planes would land and we got to where we needed to be it was great but just something about not having control of all of that um, gives me a little little bit of travel anxiety um, but that would definitely be on my bucket list um, you know there's there's some things that I would love to do I'd love to go to the college world series the D1 college world series with my mom um, we keep talking about it never made it ha I think I'm pregnant all the times that we're like let's really make this happen so um, just hasn't been great timing, but that's also something on our, our bucket list. Um, we talked about, you mentioned that Disney Plus is you know, one of your apps. Is there a favorite TV show that you watch, that you record, that's your go-to? Is there a favorite, Tom? Callie, Callie loves herself some Finding Dory, and it is like asked for 12 times a day. And obviously, for all of you people that think screen time is, is awful, we don't allow that to happen, um, but... Finding Dory is, is definitely up there. Um, and Reed really likes the, the Onward movie um, that was released here recently. So that, that's a pretty good one as well. Two great movies. When we were growing up with our kids, it was Finding Nemo. <laughs> yeah. I think Finding Nemo well, was on. 
it was on the DVR and it was played probably 30 times a day. I last night the World Series was on. You know there was football on the other station, and and all Callie wanted was fishies, fishies, fishies. And Dom <laughs> finally said, "We can't do it again, Callie. We've already done it twice." <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Let's get back over to some Muskingum stuff, and uh, let's talk about one of the traditions and where it started at Ring of Fire. A game gets ready to start. Ring of Fire hits it. The team runs out to the field. Where did Ring of Fire come from? How did this tradition start? You know, it, when when I was a player, that was always in, in the mix. Um, so, Tom, I don't know if you were the DJ back then when I played, but I feel like that song was always in the mix. And then it became um, a little bit of, of superstition. Um, you know, of, of course, there's and, and all athletics and all athletes, they do a little bit of something every day. Um, and when we started to win, we started to sing it at practice, you know, and, and it just it kind of just stuck. Um, we've, we've joked because it's, it's very outdated, you know, and, and it's for our current players are like, coach, we don't even know what this song is. And, um, <laughs> but when we change it, it just doesn't have the same effect. So it's Johnny Cash is sticking with us. Well, I'll tell you, Johnny Cash, and I remember playing lots of songs at softball games. And typically if it was played at softball games, that means they got the stamp of approval from coach Newberry. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was on there. So Reagan yeah. fire it was. And I tell you, I can't be anywhere now driving around. That song comes on first thought in the head must be softball. It's yeah. Just, it's there forever. Yeah, um, I just our players that, you know, Coach Newberry never let us listen to music in warm-ups. Like, it was dead silent because you had – it was a job that day, and, and you weren't allowed to, to be dancing or singing before the games. And um, in today's day and age, I think you lose recruits over that, you know? So, we let the music play. That it is good. And I remember working with Coach Newberry, and there was that time, an hour or two hours before game, game time. Yeah. After the game, talk to me, do whatever you need. But this is the span. It is game focus, and that's what we're doing. Um Muskingum, you know, last year we announced the building of the health and wellness complex, $30 million state-of-the-art facility, going to combine athletics, academic, community, uh, so much involved in this project. Uh, we've talked about it before. How's it going to impact Muskie softball? It's going to impact everybody. You know, it, it's um, we're going to have a, a practice facility that's going to be avail available, obviously, right after um, class time is over. It, it's going to be a, a huge plus. Um it's going to definitely impact the the day in and day out life of our program. And, and honestly, Tom, you know, you look at it, even the, the programs that are staying over here to practice in the rec center, um, it's huge for them because we're leaving, you know, so they're going to have more practice time and, and they're going to have just as good a facility, which is, is going to be great. Now, I would think during this time when so many colleges have paused uh, development, athletics are, you know, in question mark to come into our campus right now and right out the back of the door of the rec center, you see, building going up in front of your eyes when you bring recruits to campus that has got to be a special moment yeah it's it's really cool you know and for our, our kids that are starting to visit to know 2022 is is the projected date that it's going to be finished like that's just right around the corner for them um you know and, and it's 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 pretty exciting every day we drive up and you see the big trucks you know driving up and down um it, it's an it's an impressive thing to for our student athletes and it, it keeps them excited which is cool and anybody who wants to watch the progress, uh, muskingum.edu uh, slash HWC has the live cam. So you can see what's going on all the time right in the center of campus. You know, one other tradition that's over in the softball field, the, the, new, the Donna Newberry softball field, the painting of the wall after championships. Uh, the two walls on both sides uh, in between the press area and outside the press area, the number of championships. You've painted a couple up there as a coach. You've obviously painted numerous up as a student athlete. That tradition for your team is something very special. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's something that our seniors always make a goal. And um, we, we talk about if the softball facility ever moves, that wall has got to come with us, you know. And, and it just is when we have our alumni game in the fall, um, and, you know, we have women come back from the 70s and the 80s, you know, and, and they, they still take pictures you know, right next to their number and, and their kids get in those pictures and their grandkids, you know, for some of them, which is, is really cool. So um, it, it's a strong tradition here. And it's a reason why, even though our, our field might not be a brand new facility, the championships that have been won there, the tradition of the, the complex um, speaks for itself, you know, and, and every day when I park my car for practice, I take a second and I just look up there and, and, and it kind of rejuvenates me no matter if I have distractions going into practice or not, because what has been done on that field is, is crazy, you know, and, and um, 
man, are we thankful for, for all those championships, but it's, it's really cool for our seniors. And when they don't get to do it, um, they're, they're so bummed, um, you know, and then, then they get excited for the classes that do. So definitely a goal. You know, the other, the other item at the field, national championship, big sign above the dugout area. We're coming up on the 20 year anniversary of the national championship, the only team championship in school history. Uh, how nice is that to show that to recruits along with the other championships? You know, we, we always get really excited to think about the, the 2001 national championship team. Um, the teams that led up to that team, just because holy smokes, the, the, the feat that they accomplished is crazy and obviously hasn't been done since. Um, the joke on our team and with our recruits, though, is like I, I always ask them because I graduated high school in 2004. Like, what year were they? What year were you born? And they say, you know, when they shoot out 2003, I think to them, like, they weren't even alive when, when we won the national championship. So we got to get it going, must be softball. Um, you know, and, and that's obviously a, a conference championship is always our goal and how far we can make it into this, the postseason. Um, but to have that in our program is so special, especially here on our campus. Um, and to have it on our field, I feel like anytime people come to play musky softball, it's like bam right there, which is, I love it. Um, you know, it's it's an unbelievable tradition. Pretty cool. Well, a great big sign that showcases the facility along with all the conference championships, tournament championships. Uh, if you visit the softball field and you see that, you've got to know what kind of story program we're talking about. Uh, it's right in front of your face. You know, thinking back about your career here at Muskingum, you know, you've won a couple conference championships. You've been the coach of the year. You've had uh, players earn regional and national honors. What are the moments that stand out most to you through, during your career? Um, I, I don't think you could ever take the, the championship winning out, away, you know, and, and I know that when, when people think of coaching, it, it's definitely not about the championships, um, but as competitive as I am and, and our teams are, you know, that's kind of what you remember. Um, and, and I will never forget in 2014 when we won, um, you know, we, we split the regular season title. We go up and we play in Ada, Ohio on a horribly cold weekend, a windy weekend. Um, and the the fight that we had to, to make it through that tournament and just watching the last out to Jesse Matthews, you know, you throw it across the infield for the out. Um, I remember Coach Kogel jumping around. I just, you can't take, you know, you just, you can't take that memory away. And then in, here recently in 2019, we had to sweep Ohio Northern on the last regular season doubleheader to be outright champs. Um, it was, it was fun for me because Northern's head coach, Jackie Mangola was, was my GA, um, you know, so that was, that was good. But just to see the the softball field line, line with fraternities and athletic programs and our parents and our fans, um, I, I, I have chills thinking about it here. You know, it, it's, it's something that just can never be taken away from our players. And I think that that's so cool to see their hard work pay off. Well, I'll tell you, you talk about the softball championships. One of the things, this probably goes back to some of the players who were on the 2001 championship. One of my favorite pictures of all time is of the players with the championship trophies, with the big piece of plywood that kept saying back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. To back. It was so awesome to see that. They pulled it out every year, added another back on there, added, held another trophy. Just an awesome picture, and that picture sums up the Muskingum softball program. Winning championships and uh, making an impact on your players' lives to leave Muskingum and be successful beyond our campus. Uh, Coach, I want to thank you for taking time today to talk uh, coffee with coaches. Let's talk about the Muskie softball program, answer some fun questions. Uh, I wish you the best of luck as you transition through uh, what's been kind of a crazy fall and we get back at it in the spring with some musky softball. Well, thanks for having me, Tom. This is a, this is a lot of fun. You know, I was a little bit nervous. I was like, man, he's, he's going to have to pull some strings this morning, but you, you hit the nail on the head and it was, I, I enjoyed it. it. You did a great job. So thanks for having me. Hey, and don't forget JenningsJava.com for the freshest roast around. Daniel Jennings, take care of you. Coach is drinking it right now. Um, check out JenningsJava.com for the freshest roast. Thanks a lot. Go Muskies. Go Muskies.